Good morning. Welcome to the Wichita Police Department Interwatch, Wednesday, October the 18th, 2017. Wednesday, middle of the week. Hope everyone's had a great one so far. I have one Interwatch item for us today, and then Officer Paul Cruz has orchestrated some special guests with us today. So I'll hand it over to him after I get this case and allow him to continue with our briefing this morning. The case I'm talking about is going to be an attempted carjacking occurred in the 7100 block of West 21st Street North at the Quick Trip. Yesterday about 7 o'clock last night. Uh, case number is going to be 71774. 71774. Tuesday, October 17th, approximately 7 p.m., officers were dispatched to a carjacking at the Quick Trip in the 7100 block of West 21st Street North. When officers arrived, they contacted a 46-year-old female victim who stated that uh, she had went to her GMC Yukon uh, after purchasing some groceries at the Quick Trip. And while she was sitting in the driver's seat with the door open, a suspect ran towards her with something in his hand and stood in the open door and directed her to move over. The victim screamed for help and the suspect then fled on foot. A citizen who had witnessed the event told the suspect to stop and the suspect and the witness got into a physical disturbance. Officers arrived and were able to take the suspect into custody and the suspect, a 26 year old male, was arrested and booked into jail for attempted robbery, two counts of battery, assault on a law enforcement officer, criminal threats, and a warrant. It was a great job done by the officers in this case. It ended up being a key. And what was the assault on the law enforcement Just dur during the course of the event. Can you tell us what happened? I don't have all the details of exactly what happened, but there, the, during the course of the arrest and during the course of the investigation, there was um, that was an appropriate charge. Was the officer injured? No. There was only minor injuries to the suspect and the witness, uh, two of the witnesses in, um, involved in the case. That were involved, um, one, two, not including the officers, four. So three witnesses, the woman, the, the woman, the suspect, and two witnesses. Yeah. Anything else? All right, like I said, uh, Officer Paul Cruz has orchestrated some guests for us, so I'll hand it over to him and allow him to uh, introduce them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Officer Davidson, Officer Paul Cruz, Wichita Police Department. So today, uh, we wanted to take some time to bring awareness in reference to the Domestic Violence Awareness, awareness Month. Um, so to get right into what we're going to be presenting today, I'd like to invite uh, Nicole Kova, who is part of the Wichita Family Crisis Center. She's going to be talking about the organization and all the good things that they provide for our community. Nicole. Hello, first I'd like to offer a special thanks to the Wichita Police Department for inviting us here today and for being great partners to all of our organizations. My name is Nicole Koba and I'm the Development Director of the Wichita Family Crisis Center. At the Wichita Family Crisis Center, we operate an emergency shelter and offer outreach programming to women, children, and men in need of a safe place to go when fleeing a violent home. We frequently hear stories in the news regarding domestic violence. Domestic violence is a crime that affects people of all ages, races, and socioeconomic backgrounds. Nationally, one in every four women and one in every seven men have fallen victim to severe physical violence by an intimate partner. Domestic violence is often a silent crime and happens without a single person outside closed doors knowing about it. The Wichita Family Crisis Center works to eliminate domestic violence in our community by providing survivors through shelter, by supporting survivors through shelter, education, and prevention. Shelter and safety are things that everyone deserves and we strive to provide these through a wide range of services. Over the past year, the Wichita Family Crisis Center was able to provide shelter 
education and advocacy to 1,302 individuals, respond to 1,468 crisis calls, provide nearly 20,000 meals, and educate over 7,000 community members on the dynamics of domestic violence. We've had a very busy year and unfortunately we do not see that slowing down. We are actually growing programming. We have expanded services to Cowley and Sumner counties with opening two new outreach offices. We have added three new outreach staff members. Sadly, the prevalence of domestic violence in our community is not decreasing. The demand for our services is great. We continue to move towards our vision of expanded services and space to meet the needs of survivors and their children who are forced to flee their homes due to domestic violence. As you all know, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. The Wichita Family Crisis Center is participating in several activities throughout the month to raise awareness. The Wichita Family Crisis Center is one of 220 domestic violence agencies across the nation participating in the 2017 Allstate Purple Purse Campaign which is a national public education and fundraising program aimed at raising awareness of the prevalence of domestic violence and financial abuse and the need for resources to help survivors. The challenge runs throughout the month of October. In 99% of domestic violence cases, victims will experience financial abuse, which means their abusers will deny them access to money and financial resources they need to break free. Financial abuse is one of the primary reasons domestic violence victims stay in or return to abusive relationships. Without resources of their own, victims are often unable to care for themselves and their families, find employment and housing, or save for the future. Um, this month we're distributing Purple Purse Charms. Uh, that to raise awareness because we work with survivors to create long-term safety and security through financial empowerment. Throughout this campaign, we hope to bring financial abuse out of the shadows so victims can get the healing and support they deserve. We will also hold a community engagement and survivor art event for Final Friday at Positive Directions located at 416 South Commerce on October 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. Survivor art and poetry will be displayed as well as an interactive community art mural. We invite everyone in the community to come. If you know someone who may need to speak to a trained advocate, please share our 24-hour hotline number, which is 316-267-7233 or 267-SAFE. And thank you for the support of survivors. C O B A. And then the event, it was where again? It's located at Positive Directions at 416 South Commerce, October 27th. Six to nine. Six to nine. Thank you. Nicole, thank you. obviously, there are so many agencies in the community that also help with domestic violence patients. Uh, survivors. Can you talk about your collaboration with uh, amongst each other and how you guys all try to battle this really important uh, issue of domestic violence? Right, so we have a great support of um, other members in the community, Wichita Police Department, uh, Catholic Charities, Harbor House, Stepstone, um, Wichita Area Sexual Assault Center. So we try to collaborate and uh, you know the the primary purpose for us is try to bring awareness to the situation uh, and and eliminate domestic violence is our ultimate goal. Thank you, Nicole. So we also have two other uh, important guests that are with us here today. Um, we're going to be inviting Carrie McGregor, who's part of Harbor House, and then. After that, we're going to be inviting Michelle Blanc, who's also with the Wichita Police Department Victim Assistance Unit Coordinator. I'd like to open the uh, opportunity for Carrie to come talk to us about the organization. Thank you, Carrie. Good morning. Um, as he mentioned, my name is Carrie McGregor, and I am the Program Director of Catholic Charities Harbor House. 
very honored to be here today to speak on behalf of the program as well as any survivor um, that we have ever served or anyone who is interested in receiving services moving forward. Um, we're speaking on behalf of, of those of you. Um, so I am here to share about the services that we provide, how long we've been doing that. We've been in the community for 25 years. Um, we do provide an array of services, one being shelter, confidential services so we do have a, a shelter here in Sedgwick County where individuals who are fleeing um, a domestic violence relationship um, are able to stay with their children and we provide that to both individuals and families and when they come into shelter they are provided um, an advocate who can then assist them with um, kind of resources uh, related to medical needs, um, identification, um, employment, and of course housing. We actually have two separate advocates that focus primarily on that need. You know, as mentioned before, financial abuse is such a um, crucial part of why people stay in a relationship. It's very difficult for them to feel um, as if they can leave if they cannot support themselves and their children. So we do provide that to them. Um, a key component of our services is always safety planning. That is done on the crisis line immediately um, when somebody calls in for services as well as throughout their stay. Um, in addition to shelter services, we provide outreach as well. So we have an outreach advocate that can serve anyone in the community who may not be interested in shelter at this time or who may not qualify for that service in the moment. And oftentimes we are full. So we really want to provide that service to anyone who is seeking that. So I would encourage anyone to call our crisis line, which is 316-263-6000. Um, on that call, we can answer a variety of questions. It is not just to seek shelter. It is for any type of service, um, just to ask questions. Even if you have a friend or a family member who is in need of help or you're not really sure how to navigate um, the system yourself, please do not try to do it alone. That is what we are here to do. That is what we are trained to do. That is what we are passionate about. So we really want that to get out into the community that we are here and our crisis line is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So 263-6000 is that number. And you can also visit our website at catholiccharitieswichita.org and navigate that as well with uh, services. Um, as, as she mentioned too, it is October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and Catholic Charities is hosting a social media campaign um, on, in, during the month. And on Thursdays is the day that we are promoting a hashtag, Purple Thursday ICT. The hope that we are trying to get out in the community by doing that is encouraging everyone to wear the color purple. Um, it shows survivors in the community that we stand with them, that we support them, and that we are here um, to, to offer help or any type of assistance. Um, we have clients in shelter now who on Thursdays as they see people in the community wearing purple they think wow that's because of me that's because they care that's because they they hear what we're going through and they care about it so I would encourage everyone to wear purple on Thursdays and you can share it to the hashtag purple Thursday ICT in addition to that we are also doing a, another hashtag titled DV free ICT and there's messaging around the stigmas that are attached to domestic violence and that is something that we are really trying to get out in the community about um, ways to respond to victims and not to um, be judgmental or question the decision or, or the relationship or what's occurring, but to be non-judgmental, to be helpful, to be understanding, and to, of course, try to get them to feel safe in coming forward. And we feel like as a community, if we can do that together, we will reach far more people and potentially save lives. And that is the goal always. So. Um, I would encourage you again to call the crisis line 2636000 or visit our website if you have any other questions. Any questions? Can you spell your name for us? K E R I M C G R E G O R. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Okay. And then we would also like to invite um, Michelle Block, who's also a huge. Um, you know, important piece of what we do here at the Wichita Police Department, and she's our victim assistant unit coordinator. So we'd like to invite her to come, along with uh, another special guest. But yep, I have Laddie with us. He's our victim assistance dog, and he's a big part of what we do. Like you said, I'm Michelle Blanc with the Wichita Police Department victim assistance unit. We are a small unit. There is me and another advocate who is also bilingual, she's Spanish speaking.
so we've been able to reach out to a lot more people this way. That we don't just do domestic violence, we do many crimes, but as far as our domestic violence victims, there are many things we can do for them. And then we also will refer to the nonprofits who can do more in depth help for them. That we do safety planning with them. That's, as you said, one of the most important things we need to do is to keep them safe. We help them apply for protection from abuse orders or protection from stalking orders. <coughs> Excuse me. We can help them with the emergency relocation, filling out forms for crime victims compensation. Um, many times there are damages done to their homes. We can help them get repairs made for safety reasons or we can help them have locks changed. Um, we can go to court with them. That's one of the things that Laddie does. Laddie can be with the victim from the beginning of a victimization all the way through the court process. So he's helped with some of the trauma issues, helping people to be a little more able to testify when they need to, to help them calm down and be able to tell their story. Um, that's a lot of what we do. We can go to the hospital court. We, we have the ability to meet people where they're at rather than wait for them to come to us. So we do that as often as we can. And again, like I said, we're a small unit, so we do refer to the Family Crisis Center and Harbor House quite frequently. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you spell your name for us? Yeah. Michelle, it's M-I-C-H-E-L-E Blanc, B-L-U-N-C-K. Thank you. Since you have Lottie with you, uh, he's been with you for a year now. Yes, a little over uh, a year. Tell me about, um, obviously, this is an importance with your unit. They do. Just talk to me about the importance of having him in this past year with victims. I'll give an example. We went to the home of a, a young lady who was a victim of domestic violence. She was she could couldn't even really talk to us. She was just so emotional that she couldn't really talk. Once she started <coughs> petting him and kind of you know, she settled herself down. She was able, we were able to communicate with her. The detective was able to interview her. So just situations like that. Um, he's not been through the whole court process. He's in the gallery a lot with families. He can sit with them prior to them testifying and that'll help them calm down and be more ready. There's been times that I'll give the leash to a victim and let them hold the leash and it gives them kind of a sense of control. How does it make you feel knowing that he does provide that much comfort for people? Oh, it's awesome. It's the best. It's, I'm so glad I was able to do it. I'm glad I had the support to bring it about because it's been awesome. So we'd like to thank everybody um, for being here with us, all the organizations. Again, just want to reiterate um, the importance of bringing awareness to domestic violence. So please join in the efforts and the campaign. We're purple on Thursdays. Let everybody know that we're a support, uh, that Wichita ICT uh, would like to bring awareness and it's going to be a support for the victims. Uh, this is all the information that we have today. Uh, thank you for everyone for being here. If you have any questions, you can leave a message or send us uh, uh, post a comment on our Facebook. Thank you.